Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and in this video I'm going to cover some more animations, but this one's a little bit different. What I'm going to teach you is a way to transition from one view to another in an animated way, but you're going to be using a different function for this. It's called a transition function, and with it, it makes it really easy to go from one view to another with preset animations. So you don't have to really animate anything, you just tell it which view you want to go from, and then which view you're going to go to, and it will do all the animation for you. Of course, you can pick different animations. Okay, here's an example of what I'm talking about. I have a simple application here, and it just shows you the daily deal. And what it is, it's a you have like a UI view with a question mark, and when you click it, it flips over. And that right there is a transition. I didn't actually have to animate it to do that flip. I just gave it the option to flip from right to left, and it does the rest automatically for me. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do. Now before we begin, I want to share another video that a friend of mine made. His name is Rod Liberal. And he made two videos which show you how to access the camera and the camera roll, or the photo library, the right way. He found out that when he did some research, that a lot of people were actually doing it wrong. He discovered some mistakes which most developers make that when corrected will result in a better user experience when using their apps if they have to access the camera or the photo library. So if you're interested in watching those videos, I'll include a link below in the description. Okay, so here's our application. And let me just give you a quick little tour here. As you can see, there's four labels right on the front. And these are actually considered labels, these wingdings right here. <laughs> it's probably the first time I've ever used the, the wingding font. And then we have two views. So we have one view here which is the question mark. And it's kind of like the first card where you click on that's going to flip over. And when it flips over, it's going to show this view right here. And you can't see it because this view is on top. But if we click on it, and we go over here and uncheck the installed property, then we can see what's behind it. So this is the view that we want to show when it flips over. All right, so let's install that back. So here's what we're starting with. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to make some outlets so we can code against some of these objects on the UI. So let's make ourselves some room. In my view controller, there really isn't very much code. And well, there's, there's no code. We'll call this the question view. And then we want an outlet for the answer view. And also notice, uh, let me show you something else here. So there is a, there's a button on top of each one. And that's basically what I'm going to respond to. When I click on that button, I'm going to call a function which does our transition for us. So let's create an action outlet. And I'm just going to call it flip card. Like that. Now we're going to create our transition here. And let me walk you through it. Let's just go to the code here. Okay. You know how you create an animation, right? You do uiView.animate? Well, you do the same thing with transitions. You do uiView.transition. And you have a couple options here. We're going to be working with the first one, where it has a from and a to. So from we start out with the question view, right? And then two, we want to show the, we want it to transition to the answer view. And duration, eh, let's just say 0.5 seconds. Now for options, if you start to, if you type in dot, and then you start to type in transition, you can see all the different types of transitions that you can do. So you can flip from the left, you can curl it up, curl it down, flip from the top. You can do a cross dissolve which basically kind of keeps it in place and slowly the the new view will appear in place. In the example we had it flipping from the right so let's go with that. And we can explore the other ones later. And then when it completes we don't really have anything that we want to do when the transition completes so I'm just going to, to delete that because it's an optional parameter. 
And this is all we're going to start with right here. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so I come here, I click on the card. Whoa, what happened here? <laughs> the, the whole view flipped. This is one of the things that I want to teach you guys. Okay, so why did this happen? Why did the whole view flip instead of just the view that we wanted to? Because here, you notice that we say we want it to flip from question view to answer view, but we notice it flipped on the root view. Well, let's go back and look at something here. Now, here's my document outline, or the hierarchy, my view hierarchy. And you notice that the answer view and the question view, they are subviews of the root view. And this, this is actually what flipped. And that's because when you do a transition, this is an important thing to remember. When you do a transition, it is going to flip the super view. So these are called subviews, and each subview has one super view. And so the answer view, its super view or its parent is this view. Same with the question view. Its super view or its parent is this view. And this is what the transition actually affects is the super view. So when I define, I want it to go from question view to answer view, it's actually going to change them, which it did change them, but it's doing the animation on the super view. So how do we change this? How do we have it so the transition just happens on the UI view that we tell it to? Well, we can't actually flip the question view itself, but what we can do is if we create another view which these two are on, then it'll do it, the transition on its parent view. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create another view that is the exact same size as these cards right here, as these two views. So when it flips, it looks like just the question view is flipping and showing the answer view. So an easy way to do that is I could come in here and I could grab a UI view from the toolbox and put it on there and then put these two, answer view and question view, inside that new UI view. But there's another way too. If I go to editor, you go to the embed in, and I can embed it in a UI view right here. So that's what I'm going to do. And you see this white bordered view? That's the new view that it created. If you come here, you open it up, now you see the question view and answer view are in this new view right here. So what we have to do is we have to change those around a little bit and resize it, make them make the super view the same size as these sub views here. Like this. There we go. Now I can just click on this and we can put this back in the same place, right about there. All right, good. Now let's run it and see how it looks. Okay, I come here and I click on this. Look at that, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now watch something else. What I want it to do is I want it to flip back. And when I click it, nothing happens. So let's go back to our view controller here. Oh, no, actually what we need to do is, let's open up the assistant editor. Yeah, let's go into the assistant editor. And you remember we had a button on that other sub view the answer view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link up that button to also execute this code when it is tapped. So now when I flip it over I'll have this button in the answer view. So let's see what happens when I touch that. And what I want it to do is I just want it like in the example I want it to flip back to the question mark. So I want it to come here I want to click on this and it shows the answer. And then when I click it again, I want it to go back to the question mark. Uh, but it crashes. So why does it crash? Let's see. Unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So if we take a look at this. Now notice something funny here. I had the answer view and it has a value because you can tell it has a value because of this memory address right here. But look at the question view. It's nil. So why is that nil? Well, here's why. If we look at the, the help file here, so it says the from view, the starting view for the transition. By default, this view is removed from its super view as part of the transition. So it actually got removed. 
it took it right out. So when it flipped it, it took out this, it took out the front view and it just figured, ah, they're not going to need this view anymore. So let's just remove it from the view hierarchy. All right. So how do we prevent that? There is a way that we can prevent that. And it's another option down here. So let's create an array of options here by including these square brackets. And we're going to include another option. Okay. And it's this option right here. Hide or show the views during a view transition. So instead of removing it from the super view, it's just going to hide it. And that's what we want. And in this way, the question view will never be null. So let's see how that looks. There we go. Okay, and when I click it again, ah, oh, look at that. It doesn't go back to the question view. It just keeps flipping it. We don't get an error anymore. We're making some progress. But now what we want to do is we want to click it and we want to go back to the question view. But the way it's programmed right now, it's always going to go to the answer view. And that's exactly what's happening. It's executing the transition, it's doing the flip, and it's always going to the answer view. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to keep track of which side we're on and reverse the from and the to views. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Boolean variable to keep track of if, if we've flipped or not. And I'll just say flipped card. And by default, it'll be false. And then what I can do here is every time I click on the button, I want to reverse that flipped card. So I'll say flipped card equals, and I just want to change it to the opposite value. So what I could do is I could say, you know, something like this. I could say flipped card. If flipped card equals true, then set it to false. Else, set it to true. And this will just basically always set it to the opposite value. And this is called a ternary operator. So basically what it's what it's evaluating to is, is like this. If we spell it out, it's like this. If flip card equals true, then set it to false. Otherwise, set it to true. But there's an easier way to do it. Uh, we don't have to do use the ternary operator. Instead, what I'm going to do is let's just delete this. I can use an exclamation point like this. An exclamation point basically means not. So if flipped card is false when it first comes in here, it the exclamation will say the exclamation point will set it to not false, which is true. And if I come in here and it's true, it'll say not true, which is false. So there's only two values, right? So it basically sets it to the opposite. So that's a quick way to change the value of a Boolean is just by using this exclamation point. Okay. Now I need two views here. So let me create two variables and I'll just call it the from view equals, and this is where I'm going to use the ternary operator. This is where it'll come in handy. Flipped card, if flipped card equals true, then I want to set it to the question view. Because remember, by default, it'll be false, right? And then when it comes into this function for the first time, which means I'm clicking on the question mark, it's going to change it to true. And if it changes it to true, then I want to show the question view. Otherwise, we'll show the answer view. And then the to view, can you guess how this is going to look? Yeah, it'll be just the opposite of that first line of code, right? So it'll be flipped card. And it'll be just the opposite. Answer view, question view. All right, and then we'll use those variables instead of these right here. From view to view, like that. All right, let's give it a shot, see how it looks. Whoops. It's basically saying that these UI views could be null or nil. And so we have to basically tell it that it definitely has a value, which it will. So we'll just insert some exclamation points here. And it's going to want to put an exclamation point on the first one. So this exclamation point on this side of a variable, <laughs> it basically means that you're definitely telling it it will have a value for certain. There's no question about it. And the question mark or the exclamation point on this side of the variable is means not. So just want you I don't want you guys to get confused by those two. 
All right, now let's run it and see how it looks. Okay, so when I click it, it flips over, and when I click it again, it flips back. That's perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, that's just an introduction into transitions. And what you can do is you can play with it from here. Like you can change this variable right here, and I can show you some of the other ones that they have. And remember, what I do is I just start typing in transition, and then it shows me all the different options. So we were flipping it from the right, but we can do the opposite, we can flip it from the left. And there's a curl up and curl down. And I think maybe you might have seen these in other applications. It's not used very much, that, that transition right there, but I can show you what it looks like. When you click it, it just flips up, and I click it again. So it kind of looks like, you know, pages of a book or a notepad, right? And then there's another one where we can uh, flip it from the top or from the bottom. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. And then the last one is basically that cross dissolve. This one right here, the cross dissolve. There you go. Nothing really kind of like animates in this one. It just fades in and out to the next view. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new about transitions and how easy it is to go from one view to another with animation without you actually having to write the animation code. Like if we had to write this code, it would look a lot different. It would actually, it'd be a lot of work, you know, especially the flipping from the top or the curl, page curling. I, I don't, I can't even imagine how to even write that animation code, <laughs> but it would be a little bit more difficult. But here you see it's all built in and you can easily use it on your views. And this is just an introduction, just to show you a little bit of what's possible. There's a lot more that's possible and I might be making more videos in the future to show you those other options. All right, great. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Consider sharing it with your friends. It really helps grow my channel and so I can help other people with this knowledge as well. And consider subscribing for more cool videos in the future. All right, thanks guys.